the fact that clean drinking water isn't making it to all the communities in Canada is, I would say, pretty absurd, especially paddling along it. Like, you really don't understand how big the lakes are until you're going through a stretch of them. Lou and I paddled around 260 kilometers, and we didn't even do a fraction of this lake. Canoe for Every Child was an initiative that my friend Lou and I started because we wanted to just do something in response to all of these grave sites that are being found at former residential schools. Immediately my canoe came on my mind and I don't know if that's just because I get a lot of clarity in my life when I'm on the water. Following my canoe was, was Paige. She came on my heart right away. I met Paige when she was eight or nine years old and to think that if she had been born in my generation even, she could have gone to a residential school. And it just killed my heart to think that. I've been hearing from a lot of people, you know, if you want to show that you care, then help us get clean drinking water. We partnered up with Water First to um, raise money for clean drinking water for Indigenous communities, to raise 50 cents for every child that was estimated to attend residential schools in Canada. So that's $75,000 for 150,000 children. We decided that we would take my orange canoe and paddle along Lake Huron from the Shingwak Residential School site down to Spanish Residential School site. It will take us roughly, we think, two weeks. It was about going on a journey of remembering and honoring people who have suffered far greater than I've ever could ever imagine. And that first day was filled with so much joy in both my heart and Paige's. Thank you so much, guys, for getting soaked and being here. Paddling with pouring rain before would have been like miserable to me, but there was just this real sense of like peace and joy as we paddled. Yeah. We had an amazing day. We had so much fun bailing out the canoe and everything like that. It was honestly a perfect day to start the paddle. We were visited by an eagle almost every day, which in the Anishinaabe community is considered a blessing. Some of the teachings we got along the way from various people in different First Nations communities were so insightful when it came to just understanding the water and understanding what we were doing even. But the journey itself was, I mean, it was breathtaking. It was mind boggling to paddle by you know, certain scenes that were just, it felt like it was from a movie. Like, it was just, like Ontario is so beautiful. Um, Lake Huron is beautiful. We had a lot of amazing people join us on the paddle. It was incredible. And the people we met, there are some really beautiful humans, and that was super encouraging too. I feel really honored to have been able to do it. And then getting to the shore, like coming to the marina shoreline and seeing the people who were there, I felt really emotional seeing them. You get to that point and you realize, wow, like this has actually happened. But then that walk from the marina to the school, I had never been to the Spanish residential school site. The ruins of that just kind of felt super eerie. I felt pretty emotional for like the first time that trip, just to think about the children that went there that had suffered through all that and to be standing there in front of it all. It kind of reminded me, like, you know, this is real. I don't know how much a paddle changes anything. I don't know if it really does as much as hopefully makes people aware that change needs to happen. I'm really happy that we met our goal, $75,000. It's really just like a small, small thing in the one of many issues that Indigenous Canadians face.